outside of an event like this either. So I'm, I'm sort of glad it went down pretty well there, I think. Um, on another subject, uh, your seminal book, Behind the Pink Cinema. Um, how did you become introduced in the world of Pink Week and Bruno Porno? Well, I mean, this was one of those things that when I was, before I'd moved to Japan, I was always aware that uh, there were, you know, Roman porno films and pink cinema in, in the 60s and 70s. And I got to Japan and it was, for some reason, it was, I, I ended up in a bar with uh, Takahisa Zeze and, and Toshiki Sato and a couple of actors and actresses from the pink industry. And I was like talking to them going, but people in Japan, they still make sex films on 35 millimeter. And they were going, yeah, yeah. And I was going, but where do they play in? And they were saying, well, there's still a few pink cinemas around. And I'd always assumed that those ones beneath the train stations where you see the posters, that they were like in parts of Europe. You know, you just get that video shot sort of, uh, sort of sex films or, or just like sort of video loops or just hardcore videos projected in a, on a screen or at a booth. Um, so I was, oh, I just thought it was so weird that still to this day 35 millimeter films were being made that with to sell sex in japan because it, there's no reason for it i mean it, um, it doesn't financially it doesn't make sense at all uh so this really got me intrigued and then there was the case of like the history the 40 year history had never been really mapped out fully um i'd always been told how important people like koji wakamatsu were at the time but I couldn't really appreciate why, and I didn't really understand about the 60s political scene, the left-wing sort of student struggles. And so there seemed to be a whole lot of stuff I could encapsulate within that book. And it uh, ended up very long, I've got to say. It took a bloody age to write, but um, I'm sort of quite happy with the way it's come out. Yeah, so it's a really good book. Oh, thank you very saying. much. I enjoyed yeah. it. Um, there seems to be, um, not many people write on pink cinema, but those who do, they seem to sometimes get confused with what defines pink cinema. Can you give us a clear definition of what's the difference between pink cinema and Roman porno? Yeah, it still always really irritates me that people are still making this mistake out after my book and people might say, oh, but he thinks it's one thing. But the point is that I was talking to all the directors and so I've got a very distinct idea what they've told me. Uh, is not and is pink cinema, but really it basically refers to films which are produced. There's there's about four or five independent companies that make these films now. Um, they're adult films. Uh, they all get the R18 Seijin Ega adult film rating, and there's a specialist network of cinemas that uh, specialist chains, distribution chains. So it it's really is you can pin it down to certain companies that are doing it, and why Roman porno is not. Pink film is because it um, was produced by Nikatsu, a major studio, and they were totally different production, production circumstances. You know, they've got their own studio facilities, big budgets, their own chain of cinemas. So they take place in totally different spheres. Um, do you, yeah, do you feel that pink cinema is misunderstood, particularly in the West? Like, uh, it's usually. Uh, people associate it with um, like the sexualization of females and um, like misogyny, but yeah. uh, there's like female directors and there's uh, for pink films and there's also pink films targeted for women like Sashi Ham Hamo, is that correct? Yeah, She's Sashi Hamano. Well, she to be honest, her films are even more squarely targeted at men than because her films are sort of raunchier than anything I've seen most men directors. It's sort of funny, she's got a bit of a reputation in the industry. She's made about 400 films, she's still operating now. But um, a lot of, the one thing that Pink directors will always say is different between Pink and AV hardcore video is that Pink does, they are making proper films which are meant to be erotic. They're not just going straight for the, the money shot. They, they are, you know, the story is just meant to be part of the erotic sort of content. And, uh, you know, they do think they're making some sort of art, uh, you know, and it's a distinct, art in its own right and Sachi Hamano does go for the you know quite raunchy sort of approach I mean still within censorship guidelines but uh, she does sort of push push the boundary quite a lot and uh, her films basically I mean pink cinemas also there's not really women going to them it's just sort of old men I mean there's a secondary market for stuff on video and cable TV which I guess women might watch 
and they also have sort of fan screenings as well, have special ladies' night, cinema nights in Japan. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's always been the case is that what we know about Japanese cinema is what people are putting out and selling. And uh, I, if you look across the whole spectrum of, of pink cinema, I don't think you can generally say it's, it's misogynistic or, or, you know, perverted or whatever. I mean, a lot of it is, but, uh, but I mean, we single out the more extreme cases over here, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, you mentioned earlier um, in your lecture about how female directors didn't really quite exist in the Japanese film industry till after the 60s. Do you reckon that it's progressed with the position of the female director or do you think it's still kind of got the same boundaries and stigma with it? It's certainly not the same boundaries, but I know that a lot of the women who are directing now will say that it's still they are a minority I mean that's that's it's not half and half uh, it's not really half and half in any industry but um, the the problem is I guess the big studio systems before just actively I mean what you would go into a studio and become a director you were like effectively an employee of the studio so the the only way that they could have existed would have been to work independently and that a lot of before the the 80s, I'd say that most of the actress, uh, the people, the women that directed films were from an acting background. So they'd already established themselves uh, as a performer. But um, really, what made it possible was the the growth of the sort of Jishuaga sort of uh, uh, what's it do it yourself sort of scene, and and then women could prove that they were making films that were good and of course that you always forget that women are such a big part of the audiences that uh, they're popular and they're going to make money and after that um, you know a lot were given the, the chance to direct their own films. Um, my last question now, mm -hmm. you'd be glad to know. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Um, <laughs> where, where do you see uh, Zipangu Fest um, going like in future years? What's your plan for it? Um, it's so difficult to get money to do festivals nowadays. Um, we've had the scrapping of the UK Film Council obviously this year by the Tory government. Um, to be honest, I've never got any money from the, the British Film Council or anything anyway. So I, I, what I like to prove is that you can do a festival without all this sort of funding and, and try and make it work. Um, and I, what I hope is that firstly we get bigger and we get more audiences uh, and secondly get more venues across the country that will show the stuff uh, and you know establishing a festival in the first year you do, it's very difficult to get sponsorship from drinks companies for example or other companies because you're an unknown brand but if you could actually prove that you've got like sold out every night then people might well give you, ne you know, money next time to sort of stick their logo on your brochure and I hope that happens um, and we can get bigger and better. But certainly, I mean, there's a whole load of like really good old Japanese stuff that would be nice to sort of uh, show, which it isn't getting shown really because it doesn't fit into sort of different directors, sort of the famous directors, sort of retrospectives or, or things like that. So, yeah, definitely to to really ultimately what we're going to do is show that Japan is Japanese cinema is a very broad and diverse, and don't t make assumptions about what it is because you'll always find a film that will break them. Excellent. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us oh, and thank for you. allowing me to interview today. Well, it's been a great amount of fun, so thanks. Thank you. <laughs>